We've seen that some of the functions we've been dealing with in this course, such as e to the x and sine of x and cosine of x, um, can be approximated with polynomials. Um, and those are the Taylor polynomials that are associated with the Taylor series for each of those functions. What we're going to do in this video is take a look at how good of a job these Taylor polynomials do um, at approximating the functions. So remember that a Taylor polynomial is, is a finite expression as opposed to the infinite series. So you can talk about the fifth degree Taylor polynomial, the seventh degree, etc. And um, clearly the, the higher the degree, the better the approximation will be. Um, so in this case, we're going to look at the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for sine of x at x equals zero. So hopefully you've memorized that at this point. It just uh, follows a nice memorable pattern. It's actually I'll do it in red since it'll match the actual graph. Uh, so it's x minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial. So it's graphed here to the right along with sine of x, and you can see that it does a really good job of approximating sine of x. In fact, it looks just like it. Um, towards zero, uh, close, the, the closer you are to zero. The farther away from zero you get, the, the worse job it does. So let's kind of quantify just how good a job it does. So I just, I'm going to plug in point 0.1 into my polynomial. And you can do that on the calculator by putting this into y1. And then I'm, you can actually do function notation on the calculator. So I did y1 I put the polynomial into y1 and I did y1 of 0.1 and you end up getting 0.9 and I'm not going to round it all sorry you get a 0 0.0 9 9 8 3 3 4 1 6 7 now I'm going to do the sine of 0.1 and you get 0 0.099833416666 now believe it or not i actually think that this was a there was a rounding uh phenomenon here for the polynomial i'd be willing to bet that they match even farther beyond this this last decimal here we see that are different um but we'll come back to that when we do the error. But just the thing to note is how close they are, right? The polynomial does a great job of approximating sine when you're close to zero. 2.5 is definitely farther from zero. Let's see how good a job it does. So again, I'm going to do y1 of 2.5. So I got 0 0.7, 0, 9, 6, 3, 5, 4, 1, 6, 7. And when I do sine of 2.5, I should have switched to blue. I get 0 0.5984 1441. So already you can see that it's doing a poorer job at approximating a value that's not close to zero. So let's quantify this by finding the error. So what is the error? Well the error is going to be the absolute value of the true value of the function minus the approximation. So what is the true value of the function for point 0.1? So again this is uh, approximating point 0.1, uh, the value at point 0.1. So we'll do the true, which is sine of 0 0.1 minus our estimation. So we could just subtract the two values, but to show you that the calculator actually rounded here and that the error that they actually match even beyond that decimal, I'm literally going to do sine of 0 0.1. And I'm going to subtract the value of the, pol of the polynomial at point 0.1. 
and this is what the calculator gives you negative one point nine eight three eight times ten to the negative eleven so just to give you an idea that's that would be and oh by the way so that's an absolute value so it's really a positive so actually we'll just go and get rid of that negative there so that's the value so just that is a decimal point followed by uh, ten zeros and then a one nine eight three eight so that just gives you a sense of how close it is and for x equal to two point five the error would be the sine of two point five minus the polynomial evaluated at two point five and doing that gives you point one 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 six three two seven two six so I guess still a pretty good job I mean it's within uh, it's within two tenths if you think about it but uh, definitely not as good a job as when we were approximating point one uh, the value at point one, which is close to zero. So where does the maximum error occur when uh, x is in between negative pi and pi? Hopefully you've reasoned that it's definitely going to be at pi and negative pi, right? Because those are the farthest, those, those two values are farthest from zero. And the approximation gets worse and worse as you move away from zero. So at x equals pi and negative pi. So the takeaway from this video is that um, we can use Taylor polynomials to approx approximate uh, certain functions, that the approximation is perfect at the center, so these agree at x equals zero, and it gets gradually worse as you move away from the center. So I'm going to write that. The approximation, I need to zoom in. The approximation is best towards the center and is less reliable as we move away from the center. Also note that they agree at the center. Um, so at at the center, they are equal. When I say they, I mean the Taylor polynomial and the um, and the function you're modeling. So I mean again, p five, the fifth degree polynomial at zero, is equal to zero, which is also equal to the sine of zero. So you can see they agree there. But uh, close to the center, they're really close. The farther away you go, the worse they get. So um, we're going to continue this conversation. We're going to look more at error in a future video. So we just saw how to approximate sine of x using its fifth degree Taylor polynomial. And we use it to approximate it at two values. And um, right now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to graph uh, what all the errors look like. So how would we graph the errors in general? Our graph would look like, so I'm going to put into y1 in my calculator, um, the absolute value of the difference between the actual sine graph and the polynomial. So we're going to graph that and see what we get. Now here's I recommend um, when you do this to, and again, it's not it's not that big a deal, but on a calculator it can be a little awkward to be typing so many of these expressions in for the polynomial. I might put in uh, in y1. You can put sine of x, 
And then y2, I'm going to put uh, the, the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for sine. So I'm going to put in uh, x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial, which is 6, plus x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial, which is 120. So I put those into y1 and y2, sine of x into y1 and the polynomial into y2. Then I unhighlighted the equal sign because I'm actually going to graph what I put in y3. And what I put into y3 is going to be the absolute value um, of y1 minus y2. So you can see on the calculator where I'm going. And the reason I'm doing this is just because it, it makes it a little less clustered. You know, it, we all know how if you type one thing wrong into the into the calculator when you're right, graphing an equation, you can be frustrating to find out where it is. So this way you just kind of, you, you put the function into y1, the polynomial into y2, the absolute value of y1 minus y2 into 3, make sure that's the only one highlighted. Now for the scale sort of given away here, but we wanted we want to graph the errors on the interval negative pi to pi. So that suggests that my x min should be negative pi, my x max should be pi, my y min, well, we're graphing errors. There are absolute values around this difference, so we're only going to be graphing positive numbers. So our y min can be 0, maybe, well, yeah, 0 is going to say maybe like negative 2 or something, or negative 1, just so you can um, see some of the words. But I think I'm just going to go 0 for our y min. And y max, well, again, the graph here is kind of giving it away, but let's just try 1. And we can always adjust later. So when you graph, you should end up getting this picture here, which looks like it has a shape. And if you think about it, the shape makes sense. So I'm just going to sketch briefly what it looks like. It's not a perfect sketch. It's something like that. In fact, it's it sits a little bit. It's even um, it's even closer to the x-axis than I've actually given it credit for. But that's this is fine. So again, this is the error. This is the graph of the errors. So a couple of things you should notice. First of all, the error is smallest at zero because that's where the the Taylor series is centered, or the Taylor polynomial is centered, so they should agree at that lo location. And you can see that as you move farther away from the center, the error gets uh, bigger, and that's because the polynomial is doing a worse and worse job of approximating it the farther you move from the center. So analytically, what we just graphed was um, sine of x, which has a Taylor series that looks just like this, x minus x cubed divided by 3 factorial plus x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial um, minus or plus x to the ninth over 9 factorial etc right so test sine of x is actually equal to that and then the fifth degree Taylor polynomial is just the same thing except it stops at that fifth degree. So we subtracted them, right? So if you subtract these, you'll get you'll get everything except the first three terms in the Taylor series for sine of x. And since we took the absolute value, we're looking at its absolute value. So again, these go away when you subtract, and we're looking at the absolute value of this infinite series here, which is everything that's left over when you do that subtraction. Now this is sometimes called the truncation error, 
and it also is given given this expression r sub 5 of x r for remainder so and so that's remainder because we're subtracting and that's what remains sometimes it's referred to as the truncation error and this is what we're going to examine more in in a following video but in general just let's just note that uh, we graph the error and this graph makes sense if you think about what Taylor polynomials do. Um, but then also, we've just noted that sine of x minus p sub 5 of x is equal to this remainder, which means I could say that sine of x can always be thought of as a given polynomial of degree whatever plus the remainder truncation error associated with that. So in general, for any nth degree polynomial you're using to approximate, we would say that sine of x can be always written as some nth degree Taylor polynomial you're using to approximate it, plus the other stuff that's not included in the polynomial, and that's called the the remainder. So what we're going to do is we're going to really be analyzing this remainder here in the next few videos.